Well, hello there. Here in Australia, there's a weekend called the Queen's Birthday Long Weekend. It's a time when the Epi Model Railway Club have their exhibition. It's a fantastic train show. It's the second closest to my home, with St. Luke's and Hornsey being the closest. It's got a great second-hand stall, which is crazy on the first day, which is a Saturday. And I picked up a whole ton of Thomas and Friends Erdl gear there, which I've done in the last couple of years. It's a great spot to see that at great prices. But I also found something which is very interesting as well, and it's underneath this book here. I'll give you a sneak peek. Whoa! Did you see that? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. Let's do it! Okay, the first engine we're going to look at is Gordon, the number four engine, and this is the ticket on it. This is very interesting. The price is five dollars. Thomas Toy Gordon, number four, I think that says, and the condition it says is excellent. Let's open it up and take a look. Now, in my books, five dollars is the high price I'd pay for one of these toys. Um, if it's mint in box, I don't know. I'd probably be paying up to twenty, twenty-five dollars. Maybe you can tell me how much you've paid. Maybe you think that's too much. But this Gordon looks absolutely spiffo. These toys are a little bit to photograph because they are so long. Most of the toy falls into the out of focus range. But the things that I look over at these toys is, of course, you look at the face. It's got an excellent looking face. It's missing one of the stickers here. I think it's missing a sticker on the back as well. That's fairly common, I've noticed, with these toys. But the overall appearance of this toy is actually fairly good. You look for these toys at uh, the plastic here, it can sometimes be affected by sun and it will start to uh, look a bit whitish. But this one is in really good nick. Uh, it's nice that this train show that the stall, they do have stuff classed fairly uh, well. Yes, I would class this as excellent myself. Um, it's interesting, the other place I look at for how much this toy has been played with is underneath here. Well, there's the Erdl markings under this train. It looks like 1989, and the copyright to Thomas Britt Allcraft, blah blah. But the place you look to see what this toy's been up to is around the wheels, and I can see there is some fluff. And so often you'll see this on these toys because they're basically toys that children play with on the carpet. And it sort of says to me, well, yes, this toy has had a loving owner at some time. If I saw no fluff at all, I'd say it's been set on the shelf and has been in someone's collection of someone who likes trains. But going by what I see here, this has been a loved toy at some time. Well, one thing we've worked out being a Sherlock Holmes here is that this came from a carpet which had whitish, well, very light grey carpet. And what I've found is with children's collections, if the other trains come from the same home, we'll probably find out by looking at the fluff, is that some trains get played with a lot. Uh, which are the favourite characters and others get played with a little bit less and maybe whoever owned this toy really didn't hold Gordon as a favourite and I know that's going to come as a big shock to the people who are Gordon fans what is unusual about the Erdl design of these toys is the tender is actually locked onto the engine there is no articulation there so some people would see that as a disadvantage or maybe they think it makes the toy limited the other thing which was the weakness of this design was possibly the wheels and the coupling system really wasn't that great the taken plays really did improve on that fact. You know, I did convert one of these to having a free tender, and I'll show you it here. It's not very often I bring this out, and we're not going to discuss why I did this and what it's for, but it's also got HO wheels or OO wheels. The wheels do move because it needs to go around radiuses, of course, and um, it wasn't that hard to do that. Mind you, it's looking a little bit aged now, even though it just sits in a box. The tender's gone all dull, which is a bit sad to see, but it's nice for me to pick up this one here because I basically didn't have a Gordon which was in Mickey Mouse condition like this one and all one piece. Personally, I feel $5 is great value for this toy in this condition. Maybe you can tell me what you think if you've picked up something like this in good nick or maybe a little bit cheaper. But I'm pretty sure if this was in an antique store, they'd be slapping on $25, maybe $30, $35 and $40 if they're really trying it on. But my advice is if you see these toys with that price tag on it, go up to the antique dealer and say, hey, I'll offer you $8 and see what they say. You know, sometimes they'll come down to your price and if they don't, just walk away. The next item is a piece of rolling stock Erdl. And how much did I pay for this one? $4. And it says it's in good condition. What I sort of say is finding bits of rolling stock can be a little bit more difficult with the Erdl stuff. The engines... And some of them tend to be a plenty, but sometimes rolling stocks are a little bit more tricky to find. Okay, here's the tar wagon. 
I noticed by looking underneath, it's a 1993 Ertl. It's had a lot of play by the look of it. It's got a lot of fluff and stuff in those wheels, and it looks like the same fluff. I think it came from the same vendor who was selling this. In fact, it's very typical for the fluff to be jammed in like that. It looks like the same fluff to me. It's interesting. I wouldn't have, I don't know, to me this is looking more like a $2, $3 piece. It looks like it's had a fair bit of play. Oh, yeah. This one's really been sucking up the carpet. The piece to really look out for on an Ertl to see if it's still there is this coupling pin. So often you'll find this is snapped off because people will quite often come along and try and couple them by pushing them together, which is fraught with danger. If you have these trains, the best way to couple them is to just drop it in like that and you're going to save breaking that pin. But a little bit of uh, rough play and it's very easy to break those pins off. So what do you reckon my little train friends out there on YouTube? I paid $4 for that. I've only got one other, so I'm sort of happy I've got two now. Possibly it was a very hard one to find, considering I've only got one other. I wouldn't call it excellent condition. I'd call that fair, actually. But then again, if there was a pin missing, maybe I'd call it fair. It's difficult to really class ones like these. But it sure makes that Gordon look like top value. The next hurdle is Duke. I don't think I've got Duke. How much did I pay for Duke? It's $5. And the condition says good. Just coming in to get Duke out. You know the one that is often asked for in my collection is so many people ask me about the lady. Uh, something about lady that has uh, you know, people like. It's interesting. The one I think I want is Thumper. Um, but I've got Duke. Oh yeah. Well here's Duke. I've had a look underneath. It's a 1997 Ertl. I can't see any fluff on this one. Although I think it comes from the same vendor. There's a little bit of rust here. But if I scratch that round... It's really nothing. Uh, the rust you've got to look out for, for on these is sometimes as pinwheel axles we rusted out. The wheel set on this looks in very good nick. Like I said, there is no fluff. I can't see any fluff on this. The coupling area is in good condition. The face looks pretty good to me. Hello, Duke. Um, the paint job is okay. Maybe they class these on the paint because there's a few chips on it, I can see. And that's pretty typical on these sort of toys. If they've had a bit of play, there'll be often chips on the edges here but this toy does have a bit of um, a bit of paint chips on it but overall it's a pretty classy looking Ertl I'm pretty sure I haven't got this one I did have a quick look through my collection and I'm pretty happy to have Duke on board oh the next one is everyone's favorite number six engine it's Percy how much did I pay for Ertl Percy five dollars and it's saying it's in excellent condition let's find out if that's true you know, it must be a pretty tough life being Percy. He's played second fiddle to Thomas the Tank for far too long now. Probably deserves a show all to, all to himself. But who knows what we would call it. Well, you know what? This Percy is doing it for me. I looked underneath. It looks like 1987. But it's so tiny, the way they write these. I've got the big magnifying glass out. I'm pretty sure it's 1987. The wheels are in excellent condition. There's no fluff. The little face looks very cute, very Percy-like. The couplings look good. There's very few paint chips and bits missing on this one. I do feel it's in excellent condition. Most times you'll find Thomas and Percy's will be trashed out because they're quite often the favourite characters. But you know, it's funny when you start looking over this Ertl Percy, you start to be reminded of just how beautiful the Ertl toys are. They really did a nice job on the Thomas and Friends characters. And for many people, they are surely the favourite ones to have. So $5 for this beautiful little Percy, I think, was a very good deal. Well, here's another piece of rolling stock. I do have a few of these, but mine are slightly different. How much will I pay for this one? $3. And it says it's in good condition. Well, here's my Sodor fuel wagon. It's got a little coupling pin. It looks like it's had a bit of wear and tear. It was $3. It's got a lot of fluff under here. It's certainly been played with. It's a 1993. A wagon, but what is unusual about this one compared to the others I've got, I've got a few others of these, is the way it's been painted. This darkening, what would you call it, um, weathering look, the dirt look on it, is actually much darker than my other ones. So I bring in another one that I've got. It may not be that apparent on video, although I think I can see it clearly, but the one, this is the one I've just got from the train show, is darker than this one here, which I've had. And all my other ones are actually lighter coloured like this. So it seems like the day... They detailed this one, well, they must have had a little bit more paint. I dare say it's a Friday special. This was a Monday special, this one. But uh, nevertheless, $3, I think is pretty good for a bit of rolling stock like this. I think the rolling stock is hard to get. Maybe you can tell me what you think. 
Um, but yeah, I'm sort of happy with that. Well, I can assure you, this has come from that same house with the, what would you call it, white, grey, very light grey carpet, because that's the colour of all the fluff in here, and there's lots of it. So obviously this was a very well-loved toy. In fact, it's quite amazing how much comes out once you start having a good old dig. Oh, look at that. Fluff, fantastic. The next one we're going to take a look at is James number 5 engine. How much did I pay for James? $4. It says condition as presented, so it's going to be a bit of a mystery bag. Out you come, James. Or as I affectionately call James Gleaming Red Ted. But let's not go there in this video. I try not to go there too often. Ooh, hello, James. So here is this James. It's interesting. I'd say this has had a fair bit of play. I say that because of the, well, the way it looks. The wheels on this uh, James are fairly well lo uh, loose. These pinwheels tend to get uh, quite, would you say, it, loose feeling once I've had a lot of play. It's actually a 1987 James. It's actually very hard to read, but I'm pretty sure it's 87 because I've got a few others like this. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And you look at the condition of that one. Let me just drag up another one, which the charity shop had found for me. This is also a 1987 James. You can start to see the one that I'm wriggling there is actually in poorer condition. It looks like it's probably been out in the sun a bit. It's faded a bit. It's got a lot uh, more chips going on. Look at the face there. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I, you know, I'd sort of say that's in, you know, fair condition. I'd say that's verging on poor condition. Mind you, some people would say, well, poor conditions where it's got, you know, coupling dripped off and whatever else. But um, it's funny. I prefer the look of toys that have had a bit of play. Um, and I can show you another James as well, actually. If you really want to go back in time here. Here's one that I turned into a... Um, a, a tender free as we'll call it one it's got ho wheels it's got the front bogey there does move i went to a lot of trouble didn't i nice little spring between there coupling it and this one's all burnt up for reasons that we're not going to go into in this video but nevertheless that what is what james looks like if i uh, if i take the, the tender off and make him a you know articulated engine there's the one that i picked up what was it four dollars what do you reckon? Four dollars a good deal for James? I sort of think so. Maybe you don't. Please let me know. And I better let you have a close-up look or else you'll say, Oh, but Leo, we didn't see it clearly enough. There's a close-up look. There's a few stone chips there. Bit of you know, sticker there looking a bit sad. Up under the tender. It's interesting the shape of the number five on this model. Well, they're all, all like that, the ones I've got. There's his little driver's cab and his you know, box of coal. A few more stone chips, coupling systems not too bad. As usual, little stickers are missing. That was very common on the Ertles. Top of the cab is a bit scratched up. Yeah, and I'd say those wheels have had plenty of play. I just they just feel fairly loose to me. And it's really hard to see, you know, the numbers and details in this one. When they're when they're scratched up underneath, it's sort of another side that's had lots of play, but interestingly, it's got red or fluff going on, which is a bit of a Thomas mystery now this next one is an interesting one for me because i certainly don't have this one i was actually quite excited when i saw this number 11 engine who's that is it oliver it says condition as presented it's been scratched out there and said something before it's only two dollars which is very curious it's funny i would have put a high price on that myself what do you reckon coming in here for a bit of unbagging and hoping i don't stab myself with the staples Come on, Oliver, have to come and play. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just here to collect you. Well, here is Oliver. He's unusual for the way his wheels are. There's probably a secret code for that in train talk. He's a bit bashed up. I suppose that's what has dictated the price. There's a fair bit of paint missing on here. I notice underneath he says 1993. I can't see any of that white fluff. I mean, to me, the wheels uh, or that wheel area looks a lot cleaner than what the top does, which is sort of interesting. It's a bit, you know, I look at the wheel area for wear and tear. I mean, obviously, the, the top has wear and tear factors in it as well. The coupling system it looks like he's been pretty busy wherever he was. He's got a great looking face. Um, it's interesting. I, you know, it's funny. I don't even remember seeing this toy. 
uh, in the shops. Uh, for me, this is a nice one to have, obviously because I haven't got it. Stickers are looking a bit tired, but hey, I'm very happy to have Oliver on board. Um, yeah, maybe you can tell me more about Oliver. I'm sure you know. I certainly don't. So, there you go. It was only $2 for this Oliver toy. It's interesting, I wouldn't even consider coming in and tidying up the paint job. I always get haunted by what the American Pickers people say about toys that have been touched up. They tend to be devalued as soon as a touch touch up brush hits them. What is nice about this toy is its running plate is painted white. It's just a shame we don't see more of the Thomas toys with that bit of detail on it. It makes a huge amount of difference to look at the toy. But, um, I'm a bit curious, I wonder if that's been done afterwards or that's original. I haven't done any research on this one yet because it's a bit of an unusual toy for me to have. Um, it's funny, you know, my collection of Erdl's is basically made up of the ones that were very common in the shop. And I'm pretty sure if Oliver was there, I would have grabbed him. Uh, and I'm sort of thinking maybe this is a bit of a, a rarer treat. You know, now I've had a closer look at how this toy's made, that white on the running board would have to be original because the rivets here are still intact. This toy has never been pulled apart. But that's a nice detail to see. So sad we don't see it more often. You know, it's interesting. I sort of I totally forgot about Oliver, but seeing that he's green reminds me of the conspiracy theory I have about the green characters and how they got culled. If I remember, I will bring this up again in this video shortly. Oh, the next one is one of my favorite engines. It's Rusty, mainly because of the stories he's connected to. I paid $4 for this. It says condition as presented. I suppose as presented means, well, whatever you can see in the bag, but when it's done like this, you can't actually see the other side of him. Let's get Rusty out. I suppose Rusty in the Bowler is one episode, I think it's one of the all-time classic episodes. That one and Bugs, the one where Cranky appears, is another one of my favourites. But the other one that I remember Rusty in, and it's probably because it's a bit of an annoying episode, was one called Tuneful Toots. And uh, Rusty makes a sound. And it becomes rather annoying. Well, say hello to my $4 Rusty. It's in pretty good nick. The face is a little bit knocked around. That's actually a chip in his face. Underneath, I think it says 1995. The fives and threes are very hard to tell apart on these tiny stamps I've got underneath here. It looks in good nick. Quite often if these have been played with a lot, there'll be like scrape marks along here. But that plastic looks totally clean. It's interesting about... Rusty, his buffer beam here, he's got silver stickers. And as so often with Ertles, the stickers come off very easily. It's probably one of their little faults that they had. But nevertheless, overall, he's in pretty good nick. You know, I don't think I've got another loose one, strangely enough. I thought I did. Maybe I've, I don't know, who knows, I might have given it away or something. Or maybe I just can't find it right now. But I do have a very special treat, and I'll show you it right now. Well, back in the good old days of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends merchandise, the toys came like this. Here's a Rusty Who is Mint in Box. Don't ask me why he never came out. I've actually got a fair bit of Ertl stuff which never came out of the box. This is what the back of the box looked like. I think the sticker here was to do with the people who brought them into Australia. Um, but it's interesting. I suppose when they're left like this, they, um, they end up commanding the big dollars, whatever that is. But if you look at Rusty there, you can see that he's got his stickers on. You can see how beautiful his face is, and just the charm of one before it's been pulled out of the box. But I dare say, he's suffocating in there for the fact that he can't get out. And just as a side adventure related to Rusty, when the take-alongs had had their day, all the take-along toys were being sold in the shops at record low prices. And I picked up this Faulty Whistler's Collector's Pack. It's a great pack to have. In fact, I think I gave one of these away a long time ago in a giveaway on my channel. Someone out there would be the proud owner of one of these. I had another one tucked away, didn't I? <laughs> and look, there's a, um, or to take along, Rusty. And so many people ask me, oh, Leo, where did you get your Rusty from? That's where I got it. And um, it's one of my favourites. You know, this is a great pack of toys. You had Rusty, Duncan, Elizabeth and Terence, all in one beautiful pack. And don't you wish we had packs like that these days? Or maybe I'm asking for a little bit too much. Oh, the next one is, I know, a favourite with so many people. It's Boko. How much did I pay for Boko? It says on the back here, $3, condition as presented. And I think Boko would have to be one of the, uh, what would you call it, most asked for to bring back into the series. 
I think Duck made it back. But boy, oh boy, how long do we have to wait for Boko to make a reappearance? So this $3 Boko is well loved by the look of it. It's got some fluff under here. It's a 1993 Ertl toy. It's got a face which is looking a little bit tatty. But you know what? I sort of like the look of this because I can tell this toy has been loved. It was obviously one of the favourite toys, whoever owned this in the past. And I don't mind at all for the fact that it looks a little bit uh, knocked around. There's the wheels on Boko. A little bit strange because it had three in the front here. And up the rear, there was just a double bogey. I don't understand that configuration. I dare say on the real train, that was the power one here. And this is just like the trailing wheels. I'm sure the train buffs are going to tell me. There's a bit of sticker action missing here. And you can see the paint, you know, is well worn away. I see that a lot with my with my boys' toys. Wear and tear like this. There's a bit of a closer look at the front, the face. Yeah. I, I like Boko. I think Boko's just got a classic shape. I think so many people can relate to this shape. And in a sense, it's so different to uh, many other trains on the series. I suppose Daisy's a little bit similar. But I can actually bring in a fairly fresh Boko to make a bit of a comparison here. And just like Thomas Magic, ooh, there's a very fresh-faced Boko. And if I do a bit of a spin around very carefully, you can probably see, you know, the big differences between one that's very fresh and banking almost, versus one which has, you know, had a bit of wear and tear and play. But um, in the strangest way, I actually prefer the look of the one that you see on screen there you know sure it's nice to have toys which are like you know brand spanking new but there's something about toys that have been played with that uh sort of says thomas love to me well underneath Baker here i'm pretty sure we're looking at the same colored fluff as we've seen on the other engine so far i think these all came from the same vendor that's vendor number six on everything but um yeah this one's been a well-loved toy it's been a carpet toy oh yeah so here's one last look at Boko. Very hard to photograph these toys because of their length. It's always going to be some part of it out of focus. But I always say to get that great look of love that this toy's got, it's very hard to fake that look. Um, the way children play with stuff leaves a certain signature, I call it, on the toy. And this toy has certainly got lots of it. And I certainly love to have toys that look like this. To me, they just have so much more character than stuff that's brand spanking new well next up is diesel 261 it's one of my favorites it's probably a toy that's many other people's favorites four dollars for this toy it says condition is good let's get diesel 261 out and find out well this was the toy that i used as andy diesel in mad bomber and very very sadly the person who did uh the voice of andy diesel passed away recently um he was a good video friend of mine and he was always very helpful with my videos and he's um, very sadly missed. Well this $4 diesel is in pretty good nick from what I can see. It's got a bit of a chip on the front there, his face looks good. Over the top he looks pretty good. But underneath it tells me it's a 1997 Ertl toy and most importantly I can't see the characteristic scratchings that you would see if this toy had been played with a lot. The pinwheel axles seem pretty fresh to me it's interesting because um it's sort of the toy that you quite often see as being really trashed up it tends to be a favorite when children uh, have this in their toy collection uh there wasn't any fluff or dust which is interesting so it may have been just something sitting on a shelf but nevertheless from what i can see there's another chip there it's in pretty good nick and i think uh, four dollars for that toy is a pretty good price there's a bit of a closer look at the face for you because I know you like to look at the details of this. The Ertl toys, um, they really were beautiful die-cast models. It's just so sad, you know, we don't have this anymore. I mean, the perfect world, and I've said it many times over, is a toy like this with basically the couplings and the wheels that we have on the taken place. But hey, I'm probably dreaming for a perfect toy like that, but surely it can't be too difficult to pull off. Well, this Thomas toy was one that became... Andy Diesel in the video Mad Bomber 2, which never happened. <laughs> he is one of the hero ones. It's a diecast one. It has a smoke effect which has been built into it. It's probably the first time you've seen this properly in HD. <laughs> Very hard to get that smoker thing working 
had to have air at the bottom to feed up to whatever was burning inside there to make the smoke effect. It had uh, wheels that moved. It was a bit of a tricky one to actually convert over. Um, I don't know. Made, you know, little faces that were silver. There's actually three which are fairly similar here. There's a second one. Although I think the bogies on them were different because I was having trouble getting, you know, all the same bogies or just trying to get things that were the same. But I was sort of hoping that no one would notice that um, there were different wheels on them. Once again, that one has a smoke effect on it. And, you know, just putting a little smoke effect thing on it really makes a big difference. That's got rigid wheels, which is sort of interesting. Maybe that was just one for the straight, you know, for the straight track. But as I found out, anything going around corners is problematic. And this one here is a cast one. You can sort of see how rough it is. You can see there, it didn't come out of the mold correctly. It's got the smoke effect on it there. For some reason, it's got turning wheels. I don't know why I did a cast one with turning wheels. I can see some paddle pop sticks running up underneath. <laughs> I love paddle pop sticks. Um, but because this is a cast one, it's a, it's a fair bit lighter. But nevertheless, it was uh, one of uh, three of what I call the superhero ones. Um, but there was many, many others that I made that, um, well, we'll just stay in a box for now. And to totally throw a spanner in the works, I've actually got one of these diesels, which is not painted black, but it has the wheel conversion on it, the HO runners. I've forgotten exactly why I did this. Once again, it, they don't turn, which is interesting, so it must have just been for straight track work. I mean, the whole trying to turn these on curved track was a nightmare anyway, and it was never going to work. Um, but nevertheless, I remember these toys being in the stores, and I remember they looked good. And I tended to hone in on the good-looking toys. And it's sort of interesting because you just don't see this toy replicated as a Thomas toy these days. Which is sort of sad, isn't it? Um, it's one again, once again, it's one of these characters that we're hoping will come back and reappear. But there's the one I bought from the train show. How much was he? $4? I think it's pretty good value. you know. But once again, he's green. So it's not easy being green, is it? Well, the next one is actually a character I've decided to collect now. It's Diesel, or some may know him as Devious Diesel, because look at his face. How much was Devious Diesel? One dollar. Condition as presented, and it's interesting, it does say Devious Diesel there. So this person's obviously keying into what Diesel was all about. So, there you go. A dollar for an Ertl toy, I suppose, if you look around, you could probably pick them up for 20 cents, 50 cents. If you're lucky, if you buy them in batches on eBay, people sell whole collections, you can probably get them for next to nothing. But I do like the look of this one, because it's got... A lot of the Thomas love going on. Well, let's take a look around this Devious Diesel. It was $1, which is a pretty good price. I don't mind for the fact that it looks a bit beaten up. Gives it some more character, I feel. There's the other side of him. Underneath, the wheels look in pretty good nick, actually. It's interesting. It's one of these toys where the top looks fairly beaten up, but underneath, it looks pretty good. It's a 1990 Ertl toy. Uh, the coupling system's still there. It's interesting, isn't it? I'd say it would have been a very well-loved toy. I think what's sort of curious, I think maybe his nose there might be a, a little bit missing off the end there. And I say that because I've actually got another one of these which might show a little bit of a different nose. Well, there's a side of our $1 Devious Diesel, and there's a bit of a surprise here. I've brought in my other one, and he, well, I called him Mute because he appeared in a, another video I did. Which we're not going to get tied up in in this video, are we? No, boys and girls. But um, you can sort of see the beauty of the uh, Ertl Devious Diesel. Although I did change the wheels on this one to be a HOO runner. And I did show my Devious Diesel collection in another video only recently. But I'm not sure how many people went along and actually look at the later parts of my video. If I look at my video data on YouTube... It tells me about maybe 1 or 2% of people actually watch the whole video. But hey, I've got very used to seeing figures like that. Maybe if I do a Devious Diesel face-off, is that going to help us rectify who's got a longer nose? Well, personally, I think it's something to do with the fact that one's got some paint missing. But hey, what would I know? So, what's your thoughts on my $1 Devious Diesel? I quite like this. You know, people say, oh, but Leo, you can pick them up for 20 cents on eBay, but you're never ever telling me that you're also paying a postage fee as well. That's the part that nobody wants to discuss. Mind you, you could probably go and pick up, you know, a whole bulk of toys as a one, one sort of lot, and you could take the good with the bad and pick out, you know, the ones that you want, and then maybe sell off the ones you don't want. I'm sure there are people that do that. But while I was at that train show, 
on the Queen's birthday weekend, I also purchased this Hornby model. And it took me a while to work out that it was Hornby because it doesn't come naturally to me, this information. People would have said, oh, but Leah, you only got to look at the coupling or something. But tucked up inside, right up inside him, it says Hornby made in England. So as soon as I saw that, it also tells me it's a bit of an older model. It's a runner. I paid $50 for this. Uh, it's interesting, it didn't sell on that first. I came back uh, on the Monday, the public holiday Monday, and I purchased this one. It's just too much of a frenzy in there on the Saturday, the wild Saturday. But um, you probably said, oh, you paid too much for that, Leah. But hey, there's something about the older Hornby stuff that I like. Uh, and I've given this a run. <laughs> it's sort of funny when it runs at certain speeds. It's a real wobbler. Maybe people out there can tell me what it's like. But I'm hoping I'll turn this into a devious diesel. Uh, for my son because I'm pretty sure that's the trainer that he's based on and uh, what you need to do is paint him black and whack a face on the front and you'd have your own very nice devious diesel here's a bit of a closer look at this Hornby diesel it's got a little metal ladder on there on each side so I think it's nicely detailed it um, just reminds me of the way model trains used to be being an older sort it is sort of curious for the fact that it's got quite a strange coupling device at the back here i've never seen this before and i think it's because it's a shunter but there's actually a little weighted system inside the cab there i'm not sure if you can see it moving it's like a little uh i don't know pendulum of something or it's weighted and one side of the coupler here has got like a ramp so um remembering i'm not really into model trains i'd say that is like a mechanism for shunting and being able to uncouple from things quite easily um, I'm sure people will explain it to me or correct me if I'm wrong because I tend to always be wrong but nevertheless um, you know it's quite nice you're probably thinking oh he's paid too much for it $50 I don't know it's very hard to tell with the older stuff how much it's worth it's sort of funny I in a funny way I'd go for this uh, over the newer stuff that you see today I don't know why but it's just me I think there's something about the older classic stuff that um, sort of says buy me what i will do is give this train a bit of a run so you can see how it goes it's getting a bit dark but uh, hopefully you'll see something and away she goes got a nice slow speed on it but when it gets going it'll get a bit of a wobble up i'm sure of it well there it is it's not going at top speed but maybe you can see the wobble that's happening there it might be a bit hard to see but i can assure you it's not a smooth runner and if i go to full speed uh, get the other way Leo on the controller. I don't know if it gets worse or it gets better Very tricky to chase this thing around at full speed. I'm not sure whether the wobble is presenting on camera But I can assure you it's wobbling like jelly. And I've got it going a bit slower now And I can see it wobbling. I don't know what you can see on camera there. I don't even know what's in focus here. Well, my son's uh, out here playing with the trains now. I've actually um, been buying a few trains to get back my old train set from when I was a kid. I don't want to get too detailed into this because you need to see another video before really you saw this one. But I've gone out and bought this because my original train set was that. But I lost the powered motor. Well, the motor in this failed. So I bought this to basically transpose the powered motor into that set there. I purchased this train here which really marries up to these two here. I had um, lost my one of these from when I was a kid and it's all old Hornby stuff made in England. So I've got that back. I also purchased these carriages here, basically just so this train here, which is another one from my childhood. That's quite an old train there. It's got some of the pool. That was the last train I had as a child, but it gets explained in another video. I don't want to get too caught up in that here. In fact, I just think the sun's worked out that he can crash it. No, he just uncoupled it. He start, started and stopped and it uncoupled itself. So maybe that little pendulum thing is to do with uncoupling. He loves uh, playing with the real trains. It's really nice to see him do this. You know, he just tends to play with those damn apps a lot. You know, the things on the iPad. And um, I really want him to get uh, honed into some real railway stuff. So that's why my old railway from when I was a kid is coming out. Well anyway, showing you those trains may cause confusion and delay because I do talk about my train collection in another video which I don't think I've uploaded yet. So there's the lineup of the Thomas and Friends Erdl that I collected at the train shows 
second hand desks I think it was a great pickup certainly like that Gordon there but the jewel and the crown of what I found there and I was there early on Saturday is in this box here oh yeah there's something in here that I have been dying to get and I couldn't believe it when I saw it I only paid ten dollars for this it's said good condition vendor number 50 man you put a good price on that ten dollars and this is what was in that box all that there for ten dollars and yes 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 there's a silver thomas there oh yeah of all the things that i got there that's the most important one to me it was very interesting to see who was at the second hand tables it's normally what i call the older uh, men who are trained enthusiasts there's not really thomas collectors like me there so i had basically the first pickings uh, i did leave some of the Ertl stuff there i didn't grab all the Ertl stuff but i'll tell you what when i saw this little bundle of goodness which has got a few surprises in it, and you start digging down oh i tell you what my heart was beating hard okay the first one we're going to take a look at is a 2006 rosie i'm pretty sure my son doesn't have rosie i know he's got a lot of uh take alongs take and play i think this is back in the take along era i think 2006 was still take along i know you'll correct me if i'm wrong it's a very nice looking model it's got a little tiny tiny cute little uh, cold bunker on the back here and um it looks in very good condition uh it looks basically not even played with if you ask me the wheels are in good nick it's a nice little find i can tell you i'm actually quite excited about having uh, rosie on board well this next one is a really good find hidden in the bottom of that box i didn't see it initially really until i got it home because i was just so excited to see the metallics this is a 2002 so it's in the take a long era it's in pretty good nick there's a few little stone chips on it but i tell you what anyone who uh is after a lady would be very pleased with this like i said earlier in this video lady is one of the most asked for models when people come to me say hey leo can you spare me a model uh, i don't do that anymore i've sent a few models away and people say we'll send you something of course they never send anything back you out there know who you are you should be ashamed of yourself i'm not going to name you and shame you um but i tell you what what it did unfortunately it stopped me from dealing with other people on youtube because i could see there were some fairly uh what would you call it unscrupulous people out there i've got a feeling they were just flogging them on ebay but i'll get off that rant i'm getting quite angry just thinking about it actually uh but this is a beautiful model and i'll tell you what uh it's one that i didn't have so it's really nice uh to have this one on board i can tell you and i'm pretty sure the mystery about lady is lady is in love with thomas and because i can and i think it's very worthwhile let me show you an Ertl lady uh next to the take along there is just such a difference you know just once again you see the beauty of the Ertl product there's a few stickers missing on that one uh the take alongs uh sadly distorted the characters so much uh, compared to what Ertl were presenting but the strange thing is that when you take that away and you don't see them for a while you end up just accepting that for what it is and it still is a beautiful model for what it is but we must remember the Ertls were well very very superior when it came to the way they looked the next one is I know exactly what this is it's a take along Thomas I can tell by looking at the one the fact that it's got a metal boiler they changed the plastic a bit later on i've only got one other one other of these it's from i think the calling all engines paint splattered look there's his face there i mean i just wish uh they would bring out models like this again uh you know i, I could start a rant here but i won't you know where i'm going on that one i'm sure you do uh but sadly you just don't see variation like this um this anymore and why not I think that's a question we've got to ask. No use to rant. We've got to ask the question why. Um, is it because it just maybe costs a little bit too much to produce nice stuff? Or is it maybe because, well, hey, we don't really care. We're just into you know selling bulk stuff. Who knows? But uh, as a collector, this is the stuff I like. I think this is the second one of the paint spotted Thomases I've got. Um, but I tell you what, once he's landed on me, he's in for a very very pleasant lifetime living with a whole bunch of his friends 
Well, the next one is a 2002 Take Along Gordon Metallic. It's beautiful. You know, I never really got into the metallic models. I remember seeing them. Uh, and there goes the tender. <laughs> got a good face. I remember seeing them in the shops, and I said they're fairly high price. Uh, possibly just aimed at collectors or, you know, children who like really nice things. <laughs> I bought a Toby, I think. And of course, I was getting into the Toby, and I ended up giving them away in a in a YouTube giveaway. It's nice. I, there's that YouTuber up in Australia. Oh, I can't remember his channel name. You tw I'll try and put it up as a title if I remember. I think he collects these. Maybe he's got a Thomas or two that I would like to, um, you know, what would you say, swap with. Does he watch my stuff? I've been watching his stuff, I can tell you. Wish I could remember his channel name. <laughs> anyway, this is quite nice. Um yeah it's interesting on it the wheels look at the axles how wide they are maybe that's for going around corner i haven't really noticed that on gordon's before maybe it's normal i don't know let me just grab um henry i'm trying to do a double whammy here here comes henry once again it's beautiful when you see them in the metallic version i don't know how rare or difficult these are to find henry's looking very happy there I haven't even looked at the date. I should have looked at the date, shouldn't I? But um, nevertheless, this is beautiful. Um, yeah. I suppose there'd be some people who say, Oh, Leo, I want one of them, blah, 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 blah. But there's one of them that I really want, we're going to get to, that I'm very happy that I've got. But nevertheless, these are really nice to have. And I just had a look. Henry there is a 2002, so that makes him a take-along. And there's Gordon. So you just get a, a better look at these engines they really are beautiful. It's funny when you just change one thing, and that is just add metallic paint, it completely lifts the model to, you know, almost completely off the planet. But hey, I sort of knew that with one of the metallic painted um, Tommy models that I've got of Thomas. It's that one little change that can make such a big difference. Well, the next one is a 2002 Take Along Metallic Percy. Obviously, these have all been 2002, haven't they? So it must have been the time of the goodness. You just don't see this stuff today. But, uh, the Percy fans would be getting quite excited. You know, this is the stuff. I suppose, if you're getting into it, this is the stuff. If you really wanted to be a hardcore collector, this is what you go for. But, um, I mean, the thing about collecting Thomas is there's just so many different ways you can collect it. You can just collect it per character. Or you can probably go, you know, collect it per style. In a sense of just you know collecting all track master all tommy or all take and play or whatever or you can be really courageous and collect just everything but um hey we can't have everything can we percy well the next one really made going to that train show very worthwhile this is if anything i was going to pull out of that second hand area this is the gold for me or maybe shea silver 2002 take along thomas it's just stunning you know it's a little bit scratched up on the top of the cab I'm not going to try and fix it I'm just going to leave it as it is it's interesting some of the plating is affected around his boiler here and that's sort of curious because I've got other plated toys being the matchbox Thunderbird stuff and they are starting to decay very rapidly this is the problem with some of these toys they might look good for the first initial years but unless they're you know kept in almost cryogenic suspension they tend to want to start falling apart and it looks like this toy has got the classic signs of some troubles going on and here's a closer look at Thomas you can see the plating there starting to fail on his boiler section it's sort of curious his face looks great it's so interesting to see you know just a metallic version of him like this because in a funny way it really has lifted the, the look of him you always you know generically think of Thomas as being blue but I tell you what, silver really suits him. And this is a fantastic model for my massive Thomas the Tank collection. And what's interesting is, like all my Thomases, there's always a story behind where they came from and how they ended up in my collection. This one's got a little bit of a different story. For the fact that it came with a whole bunch of metallic friends, makes him a very nice little collector's piece indeed. But also in that surprise box of toys was a little bit of Ertl gear. There's the fat controller and his little offsider. What is he, the conductor? I don't know what he is, but he's always there. 
there's the underneath of them they're metal these are lovely i've actually got i think i've got quite a few of these now in the sense of the fat controllers and i've got quite a few of these guys but um, once again when they're in pristine condition they are certainly a wonder to look at uh, these have been a bit knocked around but hey it doesn't bother me i think it adds far more to their character when you see them like this well i'll tell you what i am very happy with what i picked up at the train show in the second hand area I was not surprised to see the Ertl stuff there. There was Ertl stuff there last year. But I think this year's selection is actually a better pickup. I'm very happy with some of those models there, especially the fact that I've got that really nice looking Gordon. And the fact that I've just got that beaten up Devious Diesel. I think, you know, stuff like that impresses me. But I was really surprised to pick up these take alongs here, the metallic take alongs. And to get all that boogie there for $10. I mean, look at that lady there. How impressive, the paint splattered Thomas, the metallic Percy. But to me, the absolute jewel in the crown here is coming on screen. It's that puppy there, metallic silver Thomas. To me, the eerie part about this is those ones that I paid $10 for, that to me has a sense that it was a collector who was selling those. I say that because it's all the ones that you would go in and try and collect. That's my feeling, especially seeing that take a long lady and I mean, really, unless you had a number of these, why would you ever give them away? Um, it's very, very hard to come across this stuff. Um, hopefully someone can enlighten me to exactly the numbers or how rare or not rare those metallics are. I really don't know that much about them, but I'm just so happy to have that metallic silver Thomas. It's not funny. Oh, I'm going to probably sound like a broken record, but hopefully this video has shown you that it's pretty easy to collect the Ertls if you're sensible about it. I didn't pay too much money for those. I think it was good prices. Some of those things would be hard to find. Maybe you can tell me, oh, Leo, you got ripped off. Or, oh, Leo, you got a good value. Or, oh, Leo, you're going crazy. You tell me what you think. But I always say that if you're going to come in and collect this stuff, go for the Ertls. I think this is the stuff which is the gold because it looks good. It's an earlier Thomas & Friends toy. It's getting a little bit harder to find, but right at the moment, you can still pick it up at some fairly decent prices. As you probably know, I've got a fair bit of Ertl stuff. It's the one that I like to collect. If I was going to come in and say, well, I've got to get rid of some stuff, the Ertl stuff wouldn't be the stuff I'd get rid of. It's the stuff I'd hold on to. Some of my stuff is fairly customised. They're probably worth nothing now because it's so different to the original toys, but some of it is original. And hopefully being well looked after. I've actually got a fair bit of it in a box which is uh, mint on card. But I haven't got that up on the table. But I've actually starting to amass a fair bit of it. And I've got a bit of an eye for sort of working out where to find it. And that's sort of the secret. You know, this stuff you can get it at a good price. But you sort of got to weed out where it's going to be seen. I had an inkling it was going to be at this train show. I never knew I'd pick up those take-alongs. But it's a bit of a lesson, hopefully, to all of you, just to show you how simple collecting is. It wasn't that expensive to get all those trains that you see on screen at the moment. Really, you know, you can't get past just that there, those metallics there, for $10. I mean, that's affordable to anyone. It's a fantastic little set of trains. But probably, you know, to get to my point here, what it's all about is going to train shows. Because this is the second closest one to my home. It's always proven to me to be a very good one in the sense to uh, have a look at the secondhand stalls. It's a bit tricky to video this one, although I did take some video of this one on the quiet day, which was the Monday. And hopefully I'll get that up onto YouTube. I've got to go and stabilise the video because I actually shot it in a little bit different way using a GoPro. But I better leave this video here. I hope it's uh, given you some sort of incentive to go and collect and know what to collect. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now. Well, instead of the fail reel, let's have a Thomas & Friends conspiracy theory. As you can see, I've lined up a whole bunch of trains here. Do you see a common theme between them? Can you work out what's going on here? Have you noticed something about their paint schemes? Well, I've got a theory that if you were painted green, there was a very, very high probability that you weren't going to keep your spot in the stories. I think the writers said, right, we we'll have to get rid of some of these green guys. There's just too many of them, and it probably goes back to what Kermit the Frog says. It's not easy being green. But hey, the other fans out there might have other ideas. They're probably going to list me a whole bunch of other characters who are green who I haven't got here. But I'll tell you what, that was the thing that I noticed. 
the people who were dropping out of the story were green in colour. But did you notice that no one had the guts to give Percy the chop?